In this series, five comedians from different cultural backgrounds and at various stages of their careers have come together to explore comedy across cultures. So far they've taken part in two workshops. The first with me, Dean Scurry, where I messed with their heads a little bit. Say the bleeding word! <laughs> that workshop was mad. And got to know about their fears and expectations. It's either you're funny or you're not funny, you know? So that's my biggest fear. And the second with comedian Aidan Killian, who worked on their stage presence in time. Aidan helped me figure out the formula. You know, how do you construct a joke? And why is a joke funny? At the end of their journey, they'll perform their routines at a live show in DCTV's Comedy on the Corner Club, which is now only two weeks away. Where I come from, it's tradition to eat your firstborn. <laughs> Do this, do this. Now you're going uphill. This is a chance for me to catch up with the lads. I haven't seen them in a number of weeks. I'm excited to see how far they've come, what they've learned, how they got on in Aidan Killian's workshop. Also, they're going to get a bit more stage time tonight. They're going to get two opportunities to get up on stage and the group will kind of critique each of uh, the participants. Give them a bit of feedback, let them know what they genuinely thought was funny, just so they learn from it and they get um, the experience in standing up on stage and just going through their routine and forming it into a solid set. Downhill. Okay, shake it out, shake it out like this. Give us the legs, give us the legs. Give us the legs. So I also want to check in uh, tonight with Fabu um, because there's been some feedback that he uh, made a few comments in uh, Aiden's workshop and he made some comments in the workshop that I do, uh, that I ran as well um, about women and about gay people and so on and women not being funny. Like, women just have relationship and sex, that's all, so... Really? Yeah. Can I ask you explicitly? Yeah. Do you think women are funny? Like there's um, uh, Queen Latifah, I yeah. love her. She makes me laugh. She is crazy funny. She is funny in her own way. But I think Chris Rock is way funnier. I have nothing against women being funny or gay people. You know, I just think the world should just be free. There shouldn't be a word that, ooh, you can't say that, ooh. People are scared to call people the N-word. I don't think it's a problem to call people that. I think it should be free. So just in saying that, there's a bit of responsibility as well. Yeah. yeah? You have to own what you say. Yeah. Yeah? Do you understand that? Yeah. Cool. All right, cool. Thanks very much. That's what I did. So, how have we been getting on? How have things been? I'm awful. Why, Tabby? Because there have been there's all these hilarious things happening and I'm like, oh, this is great material, this is amazing. I get to the end of the day and I have nothing, do you know, that way. So I'm a bit worried about that and then when I get worried, then I can't think of anything at all. So from this last workshop with Dean, I'm hoping to um, finally write out my material because I have all these ideas floating around in my head, but I can't seem to get them on paper. So hopefully I'm going to get um, answers as to how to do that. Cool. Sasha, how have you been? Oh, perfect. I've done a, done the perfect 10 minute set. Yeah, that's the biggest joke I've heard all day. Yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, how have you been? How's things going? Uh, it's, uh, the writing's not too much of a problem. I write a lot of stuff, but it's finding uh, what is funny. Funniest bit is where people laugh. Yeah, but how do you know? Because they laugh. Right. right. But, but how do we know without an audience? Yeah. That's what we're going to try and do tonight. Right. So yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since uh, um, we were here last, and I suppose we're given the exercise of doing lots of homework and writing stuff up. So stop the starting. Got lots of stuff written. I'm not too sure what's funny though. So it's a case of whittling, whittling down. So uh, hopefully, like that, will come come together. We're going to do a little bit of laughing. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. <laughs> <laughs> How are you getting on with your comedy, with your writing, with uh, your jokes? 
I don't know, for some reason, when I'm really worried and stressed out, that's when I find things funny. So I write them down. So at the, mo at the moment, I'm kind of like worried and I'm stressed, you know. This is a time when, if I'm stressful, whatever I say to people, they laugh. I was like, oh, that's funny, then I write it down. So it's going good for me. Can you rap? Can you rap? Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Go, go, go. I'm a very good rapper. Go. All right, let me rap for you. Yeah. <coughs> they call me S to the A to the V. You think you've been looking for me, Ireland, to a happy. I'm a pikey, has to rub his Nike. Haven't got a caravan or a transit van. Have a house and nobody cares. Still getting used to the fucking stairs. I think from the first workshop, we set the tone in terms of being open and creative and honest with each other, you know? Uh, and I think that that's paid off dividends for them. They really come together as, as a tight group. Okay, just me, my bitch. I'm a form my girl and the cinema scene. When I'm back with you, I'm a back for free. Here's my wife, Dean Scurry, 50 pounds to you. That's all it is, all I've got. Here's the pop, thanks a lot. Hey! What, <laughs> boy? Yeah. That was some, some camp rap from Thomas. No, campsite rap. Campsite rap, very good, very good. Well, the second uh, workshop here with Dean, I'm kind of expecting to be a little of the same as the last one, but it's a bit, it's a bit of crack, I suppose. And uh, there's uh, a bit of nerves going into it as well, because I know that we're performing, and everybody kind of brought their own little 10 minutes. But uh, I'm hoping everybody enjoys it, and I feel I might enjoy it as well, maybe. I'm looking forward to today's workshop with Dean Scurry, because it's our first opportunity to actually um, showcase our, our gags and uh, so he's going to have a look at them and, and hopefully he'll find them funny and uh, take on board any constructive uh, criticism that he has. Hopefully hopefully he'll, he'll be able to sugarcoat them, you know. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Tommy! So then what we did next was got the guys up on stage again, just to get that little bit more stage experience and get comfortable with our own voice. Um, well, I'll sort of give you a little bit about my life story. I was born under a starry night in October. You might get a few, I know a few of you thinking, oh, that's so sweet. Well, I didn't really have a roof. The thatching fell off, so it wasn't as romantic. But anyway, I came here when I was nine years old. And then, um, sad news, I found out that I had scoliosis, which, if you know, is a mild curvature of the spine. And it turns out, apparently I thought I was born with it, and I thought, oh, you know, darn. But it turns out it's because um, I was pretty much treated like a koala for the first, okay, nine years of my life. Mm -hmm. You know how the African women do with the, with the babies, sort of like, that, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, that was me. And that's all I have. <laughs> Tabby wasn't prepared at all for this task. She had very little material prepared. I hope that she gets uh, a little bit of a kick from that, you know, in terms of getting some material together, getting some jokes, getting inspired, and that she doesn't, you know, fall back into a dark hole. Do you feel you will have enough material? I, I feel like I would because I literally just knocked that up. <laughs> it was fun. Cool. It was very nerve-wracking, sort of trying to think of what you're going to say. and um, But it was, it was good. It was all right. It wasn't too bad. I sort of enjoyed the winging it, but um, obviously I can't do that because it could go horribly, horribly wrong. So it was a big wake-up call that I need to um, start writing and get to it. Elle adore la banane, et moi j'ai l'air. Today I'm in Moore Street. Um, as many of you well know, this is the place that's steeped to deep in Irish history. Would you like some hair extensions? The reason why I'm here mainly is to get material for my routine because I'm sort of struggling a little bit. But um, hopefully I'll get some good stuff here, solid stuff. I think I'll ask a few of the stall owners what sort of the vibe is, you know, with regards to humour because, um, well, I, the Irish are renowned for their sense of humour. And I'm just wondering, does it sort of translate cr across, you know, because you have a stall on one side and then you have an African sub right beside it. Like, do they even interact? Is it funny? Do they get each other? That sort of thing. Mm. Where should I ask you, what's the banter like with the Africans? Or is there any banter at all? Are they lovely? Are they? Yeah, you can have a laugh with them. Which ones would you recommend to go into? Well, I'd recommend the one in there. Oh, what do they you do? You can have a massage in there. Have you gone in for a massage? Yeah. 
Really? Lovely, yeah. Would you recommend it? Yeah. Could you get Botox? Yeah, Botox. Yeah. Botox. Yeah. You know when they sort of like plump up your lips? I don't, I don't need plumping, as no, you can see. Do I. You try and tell me I need plumping? Well, you sort of do. Do I? Yeah. Fucking cheek, yeah. From well, the laughing, I like the laughter. Lovely. You've laughed your lines. <laughs> Right, How old are you? What do you want? Uh, uh, no sex here. No sex. No sex. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Bye bye. Try the Chinese stall down the road. Where? Chinese, Chinese there, massage. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No worries. 20 euro. I'll tell you why I'm here. I'm filming this thing called Journey of a Joke for DCTV mm -hmm. and um, just trying to break into the Irish comedy scene. Yeah. Like, do you have any jokes from your country, specifically your country, that you don't think that somebody else would get? Oh, like all the joke, up, did you hear any jokes? All the jokes we we have is about tortoise. I go. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, all jokes in Nigeria are about tortoises. Not even turtles, tortoises. Tortoise went to uh, his uh, family's uh, house, uh -huh. and they were cooking something like a porridge. And when the the people come out. So the tortoise was just, he doesn't, he was just choking. The tortoise was just choking. Tortoise, what's wrong with you? By the time that tortoise will open the, the cap, cap, all tortoise hair went off. <laughs> okay, I don't get that. <laughs> you don't get that? I don't get it. But I didn't get it. Which so, sort of goes to show that sometimes you might not entirely get um, other people's humor, which is sort of what we're trying to explore here. I was thinking of getting my hair cut. Your hair cut? Yeah. 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 So you want to cut the what hair? What do you think? Yeah. So why is no. why every time I want to cut it, everybody's like, "Don't cut it." No, no, don't cut it because I think when you put extensions, it's better. I don't want to put extensions. Or even braid. I don't mm -hmm. want to braid it. Why? Because I want to keep my hair natural. No, you know the braid is natural. It's yeah. not natural. It's, it's natural. Hair. No, I'll show you. I have a my natural braid. Yes, I have the this thing here. I I'm here all the time every two weeks to change my hair. And I'm hoping to get my hair completely shorn today. African hair is so hard to grow which is why they have all these extension shops. So um, they sort of freak out if you want to cut your hair in any, even trim it, it's sort of like a taboo thing because they believe beauty is in the hair, but who cares? Well, I am not my hair. <laughs> call you twice boy today was fun I met a few interesting characters there was Gloria in the African shop and then uh, we met Hitler's friend when I say Hitler's friend Hitler's a sole owner now come here I'm curious as to why she's called Hitler because like you wouldn't want to be yelling her name over if you're surrounded by sort of black the reason why she's called Hitler she's like Hitler is she yeah in what way she's no time for nobody hasn't got a bit of patience and she'd kill you as quick as she looks at you Yes, no. oh, please, please. Yes. Yeah. Like, would you yell her name over the market? Hitler! Hitler, you want it! <laughs> yeah, it seemed to be sort of slowly accumulating material. I was a bit worried about that, but it's all slowly coming together, so fingers crossed. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Thomas McDonough! Well, we start with the irony of a traveller. Most of us are called travellers, and yet most of us have left the country. Um, I'm a traveller and I'm sure you know travellers get married very young. I'm not married, I'm only 18. Although my parents consider me too old to get married now. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm not married, I do have a kid and I was quite worried my kid was born because my kid was born without a penis. Turns out I had a baby girl. <laughs> like I said, I'm 18 it's quite tough having a kid at this age. So um, I don't plan on having another one for a long time. So if it helps, I think it might do. I'll name a kid Jorex just so I don't make that mistake again. <laughs> I'm officially an organ donor since last week. I donated um, a church piano today. But... <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> <laughs> uh, My father used to use bedtime stories to help me to sleep at night. Um, he didn't read it, he used to hit me over the head and say, Sleep, I have to go to work in the morning. Thomas, you know, he done a, he done a nice set, but I don't think it was as good as it could have been. I think he missed out um, from not being at Aiden's workshop. Uh, there was no eye contact, it was really, really fast paced, so much so that I couldn't understand a lot of what he was saying. Oh, definitely slow it down because it was, if you got someone laughing because you, you, you're firing them out, so it's almost like when he's finished laughing, you fired three off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you, you put your hand like you're doing now, yeah. you put your hand on your mouth and, and we can't sort of hear or see, but you do that a lot. 
I think last week Aiden was saying, as long as you're aware that you're doing it, because I don't think you're aware that you're actually doing it, then it becomes a nervous twi- twitch. But if you're aware that you are doing it, then it could just be your thing. You mm. know, just yeah. be aware. Dean's workshop was absolutely brilliant. It was brilliant because we actually got to perform our full routine. Uh, with almost almost the full routine uh, in front of uh, Dean himself and in front of all our, our colleagues. Now, does every, anyone know here what clarified butter is also known as? Ghee. Curry made. <laughs> ghee, exactly. Now, ghee. Now, in my culture, we cook with ghee, right? Now, obviously, in Dublin, when you say ghee, lots of women kind of go, ooh, you know? So, I had just arrived in Ireland. I'd stopped off in an Asian supermarket, picked up my tin of ghee, and went off. <laughs> went off to Madigan's to have a few pints on the way home, as you do, right? So then, after a few pints, got home, realized I left my ghee behind. <laughs> Shit. So, so, what do I do? So the, the following day, I go back into Madigan's and say, Hiya, how's it going? I was here last night. <clears throat> I was here last night. I happened to be sitting over there, and did you happen to see my ghee? <laughs> uh, the bartender was like, uh, so, sorry, love? What? So like, yeah, my ghee. It was in a tin? <laughs> you keep your ghee in a tin? So Dill was fantastic. Dill, you know, was really, really punchy. Her jokes were nice. She was really well prepared. She took on board all of the kind of uh, tips that uh, myself and Aiden had uh, instilled in, in her. But then he turned to his mates, his lads, and said, hey lads, there's a woman here who's got some ghee. Uh, so I have no worries with Dill at all, and I think even Fabu, the, the guy who said he doesn't think women are funny, uh, was blown away by you know what Dill done on stage. You know what? You, you actually proved me wrong. I think women are actually funny. So that was the start. Your work here is done. Did you get that on tape? <laughs> Any feedback for Dill? Gee, keep saying gee. Oh. Expand on gee. <laughs> gee, <laughs> gee. Start with the gee, because I'll have them just on the oil. No, that leave, was leave the gee. That gee is the yeah, last. The last. Yeah. It really went well, and uh, afterwards, I think Fabudi and myself are now busy mates. <laughs> We have completely buried the hatchet, and, and I think it's—I think that's the power of humor. We started off on this journey at opposite ends, and, and m- many times we clash, but we're coming to, to the end of our journey. We might have—you know—we might be married and, and live happily ever after. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just have a headache every night, though. You know, sorry, Fabu, not tonight. I've got a headache. <laughs> Thanks for coming back up to the stage, Fabu D. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm not I'm not really a happy person, you know. I'm just I'm just really sad today. I'm just, I would have I would have made you guys laugh, but um, my girlfriend just dumped me, you know what I mean? So I can't um, do good today. Uh, we were together for a long time, you know. We were together for like two weeks, and um, <laughs> she just broke my heart. It's crazy, but um, life still goes on. Fabu was next. Fabu was a little bit hit and miss today, a little bit low energy. He, you know, he wasn't that funny. Um, he didn't seem like he cared too much about about it. So, it just didn't happen tonight. He has the material. It's just about his focus. I I was just based on the last time. I was expecting funny at the start, but you kind of came out a bit serious. Just even a smile just helps people along and eases people because the audience. Um, for the most part in comedy clubs are a little bit afraid and, and frightened, no matter who's up on stage. We are not used to criticism, like we do shows, wow, you did a great job, even though you do something bad, nobody's gonna come up to you like, whoa, what you did was not good, what you did was not good. As a beginner in comedy, people always come to you and say, whoa, you did a great job, even though you didn't do a, great, um, a good job. But what Dean taught us that day was face your criticism and just go there and make people laugh. And if they're not laughing, then you don't care about them, you move on to those that are laughing, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, very, it's very helpful, it makes me more stronger in comedy, so I think it was great. We're in uh, church, 
I know it looks like an industrial estate, but uh, no cross on top of everywhere, but it's a church. What, what, what don't get is how come a lot of people come to this church? And a lot of it's like this church it stands out. Do you think this is a church? Do you think this is more like a factory? Know, it's like a what? A factory. It, it doesn't look like a church, no, it looks like no, a factory. No, 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 no. So you're trying to, oh, it's okay, this one looks like a church, and this one looks like a factory. Just, which, which, would you, which would you rather? Yeah, Even yeah. if you don't know what name is, you're coming in from you know the entrance, you'll be like, the church is a church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I'm going. laughs> oh, oh so, someone's going to our church. Someone's going to our church. Yeah. Yes, please, please. Oh. No, he went to the church. I'll come here. Now every Sunday is back. Like few Sundays, you know what I mean? When I'm not, when I'm free, you know, when I don't have a hangover, you know, I just because <laughs> sometimes I have a hangover. <laughs> God understand. See the way that sign was big. Like, look at that sign. This is the biggest sign. Mountain of fire, miracle. This is our sign. Cool. Huh? Yeah, Africa. <laughs> what kind of religion is it? It's a, it's a Christian religion, like any other religion you can ever think of, but just in a different way and tradition. I know a lot of Irish people go to Catholic church and everything is all quiet and sit down and watch the mass kind of boring. And this is not a little bit boring, this is fun. Everybody stand up and kind of like, kind of vibe the groove, you know? This is like party and church at the same time, you know? Church in Africa is different. Like you know, we have the mountain of fire where they all go crazy, like all fire. Ah! But they like calling Jesus. So I think sometimes I kind of think Jesus get freaked out and like oh, don't call my name that loud. Come now, what's going on? Is it right? Like everyone just cry. Ah, Jesus, where are you? Hey, Pastor Gold is a very great man of God. Very good man. He's actually he's been there for me for a while. He's, he always sometimes give me advice about comedy. And he, when he find out I was a comedian, he came up to me and said, "Oh, right, you're a comedian. All right, cool." He tried to tell me some jokes to say on stage, and I was like, "Ah, oh, pastor, man, that's too that's too holy. I don't think people can understand what you're trying to say." He told me a joke, and he's like, "Oh, say this." He's like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I have a joke. I have a joke for you." I was like, "What's the joke?" He goes, "Um, all right, cool. You know when you go to people's house, right?" And say, "Oh, sorry, go to the living room." And he's like, "Is there a dead room?" You know, I was like, why you just say this is living room? Is there a dead room? I was like, all right, sit so down. I was like, all right, cool. I will say that on stage. And he, that's what he is. He, he likes to give me inspiration. He's like, oh, don't dress like this. Dress like that. Dress like he called Jesus' name all the time. I'm telling jokes. Oh, Pastor, come on, that's so holy. When I'm telling jokes, I'm a different person. You don't understand. I, I'm nasty. Even he's like, no, no, no. Use it to win soul. They tell jokes when people go home, they're going to be happy and they're going to think about Jesus. Uh, for good, how are you? I'm very good, yeah. It's, 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 it's very interesting. I know I haven't been in church in a long time. I'm just coming to church today. Yeah. <clears throat> we really miss you in this church for a while now. And, uh, yeah. you know, I'll be trying to call your number often, and uh, sometimes you pick, sometimes oh, you don't pick. I don't know why. It's kind of like doing comedy and stuff. You know, okay. You know. And how uh, is the comedy show going? It's going good. It's going good, basically. It's really going good. Are you, are you studying about it? Like I told you, you need to be always study and. Uh, try to listen to other comedians as well. That will give you more inspiration. A comedy show is all about healing those who have, who, are, who are wounds in their heart, you know? In every comedy I do, I pray to God. I said, God, I'm about to go make these people laugh. And you understand why I'm doing this. I'm, I need to make a living. And I want to put a smile on people's faces. OK, words I say, please, God, forgive me after I say this. And I say it, and after I say it, I pray as well. I say, God, I'm glad I made these people laugh. Please forgive me whatever I've said is against your word. I'm, I'm having a show, so I'd like you to pray about that for me. So I'm hoping for the best for that show, you know? Okay. Yeah, so... The Lord God will shower your blessing, and yeah. the Lord God will protect you. Mm, yeah. The Lord God will make you to move among, <coughs> among great men. Amen. And you stand in the shoulder of great men with a great height. Amen. God wants you to be good, have a positive life. Don't do bad things, but have fun. Even the Bible says drink, but don't drink too much. It's in the Bible. So I'm just saying, it's, it's just the way I believe. My belief is different. I believe in positive life. Do good and be good, be positive. Please welcome to the stage, Sasha! Woohoo! All right, accents, right. I, I like doing accents. And um, so we got, uh, we got the English RP, which is the received pronunciation. You hear that on the BBC. I call it the three plums accent. Because imagine that you're talking and you have three plums. And what you do is you talk normally and you take a plum and you stick it under each armpit and you hold it really tightly. You take the third one and you stick it between your buttocks and you clench really, really tightly and all of a sudden you end up speaking like the royal family. And that's why it's called the three plum accent. 
Yeah, thinking about Dean's last workshop that we did, got some good feedback anyway, and it kind of you know spurred me on that night to to really hammer down the material, took the feedback on. But there's stuff as well that you're doing with the accents is very funny. The stuff around the accents is very funny, but the, some of the accents itself, I'm not saying that they're bad. So I think more or less kind of practice your accents a little more because most of your jokes are kind of around them, you know, kind of way. To get that feedback and deal with that feedback, uh, you need the feedback. But the first thing I normally get is it's quite bitter. It's like, it's, this is my material, these are my children that I'm creating, and it's like, you don't think this is funny? And uh, then I have to overget that, uh, overcome that, and then afterwards it's kind of like, okay, listen, can take that criticism on board. And if you hear it from different people, you have to take it on board, and you have to deal with it and rework it. And either you get your material and you try and change it so that it, it's, still, it's still there, so it's more acceptable, or just do the most difficult thing and bin it. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a, uh, a 10 minute stand up opening at the Black Caps Comedy with Tracy O'Neill. Looking forward to it. I've been preparing using a lot of the material that we've done so far with doing the other shows. We're going to kick off Bang On. Bang On 9 o'clock. You're o'clock. actually opening the show. Right. That's good. That's Did good. I say you, you spice it up, Sash? Because you're going down really well in Black Cats, Sasha. Yeah, I go down all the time. Well. <laughs> you're so dirty, yeah. Sasha. Well, I was actually at the Paddy's Festival down in the Milltown Theatre, and Sasha was on stage, and I thought he was fantastic. And um, he rather liked my comedy as well. So we got talking, and so as soon as I saw him, I'm like, right, I want Sasha for Black Cat. So we're looking forward to tonight, uh, you know, uh, Tracy's great. Uh, she's... Uh, you always get a nice positive vibe when you speak to her about comedy when you go into there and you know it's more like what you can do rather than what you can't. So I've been doing a slot in there about once every, every month um, and it, it's, it's places like that which are really important for, for me and comedians who are just going to start out because this is our avenue for actually learning our craft and getting out there. I haven't met you before, have I? No, but no. Tracy's told me all about you. What have you said to her? Right, just with the comedy That's the only reason I've come. Right. Coming to Ireland, I suppose, you know, and forming a kind of social network of friends. It was good at the beginning because I, I used to drink a lot more then. Um, but then about a year into it, I couldn't just didn't drink. So I found the social circles that I had were kind of whittling away. But what I found with comedy is we get to meet all sorts of different characters in there, you know, and there's good people that I will always keep in touch with. If I don't do stand-up comedy tomorrow, I know I'm still going to keep in touch with them. people like Tracy. With the mic, I'm really squeaking. <laughs> so, like, things could start breaking. It could be like Poltergeist in here or that film Carrie. At the, at currently, I'm doing one to two gigs a month. I think this is maybe my 20th gig now. And now I'm just starting to feel a little comfortable in front of the crowd and learning how to interact with them and get them the material. But I reckon it's going to be on the, the, the number I have in my head is the 100th gig. Then I know where I am and what I can deliver. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce him. His name is Mr. Sasha Pakri! Uh, the ex-girlfriend, she's from Kerry. Uh, she's a porn star. She's going to be so pissed off when she finds out. <laughs> On her website, I put, she's the most beautiful woman I had ever made love to. I think her sister's going to be quite annoyed. <laughs> Uh, and, and so I've been in Ireland for the few years and, and being with an Irish girl, the, the fascination with making your skin darker, the fake tan, you know, the gels, the wipes, the lotions, the potions, the sunbeds, the, the, the tea bags, all to look like me. <laughs> I, 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 just don't, I just don't get it. <laughs> Humour will break walls down. Doing comedy, it allows you to talk about things which you wouldn't normally talk about. You know, I can sit in a pub sitting next to a girl and start discussing things about fake tan, you know, she'd walk away or call the guards or, you know, get the bouncers to throw me out. But on stage, I can talk about it. If you go to India and you go to Africa and the subcontinent, they're going to great lengths to kind of bleach their skins to look quite like you. The girls in Delhi would be happy. They'd be like, oh, Yumla, da, your skin looks so beautiful, Yumla. Your skin looks really, really pale. Is that the new bleaching treatment from Dr. Gupta? <laughs> no, better. this is the 100% natural. I was two weeks in Westport, huh? <laughs> Not one drop of sunshine. Didn't want to come back. <laughs> oh, Yumla, uh, don't be standing next to me. I look so dark, huh? All the men are looking at you. You're going to get a really good diary, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry 
But I think you know what you're doing. Yeah. And the same with all of you guys. You kind of all are going in the right direction. Just tidy it up, get those punch lines, no rambling, slow down if you need to slow down, have your open and joke. Focus yourself towards Aiden's workshop and have any questions for him yeah. when you get there, okay? Good stuff. Lads, thank you very much. Big round of applause. Next time on Journey of a Joke. Oh man, can't do that though, man. <laughs> there's only one week to go before the big show and the nerves are really kicking in. Uh, a bit nervous now. Had a nice relaxed day. Um, but I can feel it picking up now. Tom needs to slow down. Travellers are used to like talking fast anyway, especially when they're trying to like, make a sale before the guard comes around the corner. Fabu needs to cheer up, and Tabby has a lot of work to do. Because it just seems so real now, sort of like, if next week it's happening. Still, all my dreams come true in the form of an American man.